offer our, our gifts to the Lord. Oh, yes, thank you very much. Um, let me finish that one thought, though. Um, this is the, in some churches, the bread and the wine are brought from the back up to the altar. Um, because of our space, we don't we do not do that. But um, the idea being that we are offering what the Lord has given him back to him. Not only with the bread and the wine, as, which are symbols of our, our, our labor, but our, our resources, our money, and our, our whole selves. So we will do that in a moment. But first, we're going to pray for our intercessors. Again, we will have two teams in the back. If anybody has any needs, they'll be available during communion. And for those who don't know, these, these team members that you see come forward on Sundays have all been trained for this. Uh, this isn't just something we ask them to do on the fly. They've devoted uh, many hours of study and preparation to, to stand in the gap for those who come asking for prayer. And we, we certainly appreciate your service. Let's pray for them. Lord, we do thank you for these faithful servants and ask that your Holy Spirit would anoint them afresh for this ministry of intercession, Lord, that you would stir up in them the gifts that you've given them so that they might be channels of your grace to all coming to seek your face. In Jesus' name. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Do you want to do it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mark a little bit. For our offertory. And we're about to do it. 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 We don't have words on it. Words for that. These are the intercessors.
um, we've done this part of the service, but I wanted to have this chance to explain what all of these things were. The first thing Mother Trina is going to take off of, this is called the stack, highly liturgical term, by the way, is the verse. It's called the verse, and in it are extra purificators. It's actually where we get the word purse from, because it's like a little purse. Um, and then the next thing that comes off is the veil, which covers um, the whole Eucharistic elements there. It's the color of the season, again, to tie that in, to remind us what season we're in. And then this is the hall. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is highly liturgical. It, it was originally intended to keep the flies out of the wine. Some of you may notice that I've used it at our outdoor Eucharist. Because, um, I know you appreciate that. Um, yeah. The next is the patent. And on it is the priest host. And it's, it's just like the wafer that you receive. It's just larger because it's easier for you to see than when I hold up a little tiny one. But this is just called the priest host, and it's more for demonstration use. Uh, purificator is like a napkin. We use it to keep the cup clean between people using it because we share a common cup. And this, of course, is the chalice. And um, we use two out of practicality, um, but we always celebrate with starting out just the one to remind that we, we all share the one body and one blood of Christ. So let's go ahead and fill it. Um, we receive a count to let us know how many of you are here. So the first thing Trina is going to do is make sure she has enough wafers for everybody. And um, we use this instead because it's a little easier to do with the nice pretty one. <coughs> just to show. And um, in addition, we put the wine in the cup and also reserve some for the second cup, which we'll be using during communion. And we always mix water with the wine. That's a very traditional thing. Um, in that culture, they would always water down their wine um, for, for all kinds of reasons. The children, of course, that would be their drink as well, and you didn't want them getting intoxicated. Um, but it has a symbolic purpose um, in that it reminds us that when Christ died on the cross and the spear pierced his side, water and blood both flowed. And so, like a lot of things we do, it has a symbolic and a practical purpose. Um, as she finishes that, I'll, I'll remind you, this is the called the corpora. That's a Latin word for body. And it goes underneath where all the Eucharistic elements are going to be, so that if any crumbs or spills, they all stay on the corporal. It's a way of just kind of keeping all those, the blessed things together. <clears throat> this is called the fair linen. It represents the shroud that wrapped Christ's body when he went to the tomb. Um, traditionally, and one day ours will too, it has five crosses, one on each corner and one in the middle for the five wounds of Christ. So that's the, the limit. Thank you. And the, this is a purely a symbolic washing of the hands. Um, it, it's a reminding reminder that I, I need the cleansing of the Lord to do what I do on your behalf. And the, the, pr the private prayer that I always say at this point is um, comes right out of Matthew when the centurion came to Jesus to ask for healing for his um, servant. He said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul will be healed. So it's a way of preparing myself. Um, turn in your worship book to page 5, and the, the beginning part of what we say, the blessing over all of this, uh, if you've ever worshipped in the Catholic Church, you might recognize that. That's part of the Catholic service. But actually, it's older than that. It actually comes from Jewish prayers that are offered at the Seder. Baruch Atah, Adonai, Elohim, Merakalom. If you've ever been to a Seder, you might hear that. Basically, almost a word-for-word -word translation of what we're saying here. So, um, that's it's not just a Catholic thing. It's a Jewish thing we're doing. So, please stand and turn to page 5. And we'll continue on in the service. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed, Blessed, God of Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed Blessed God of Receive, O Lord, these gifts presented by your people for the work of your church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the obedience of your saints you have given us an example of righteousness, and in their eternal joy a glorious pledge of the hope of our calling. 
Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now, the bells had a somewhat of a practical purpose as well. Many of the old, old cathedrals were very large and long. And, of course, they didn't have these nice little things around their ears to make sure everybody could hear them. And also, for many, many, many years, the church was in, the, the Eucharist was in Latin, which was not the common language of the people. And the bells were a way of drawing their attention to when something significant was happening. We just shared the very words Jesus used at the last <coughs> when he instituted the Lord's Supper. And so that's a way of drawing your attention in case you're sitting way in the back and you can't hear a word about what's going on. Also because it's a, a wonderful, beautiful sound in our ears as well. And our worship is all about using all of our senses. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. One of my favorite parts of the service. Um, I like to call it spiritual trash talk because it reminds the Satan of who we are and what we believe. That Christ actually did die and that he truly is risen and that he will come again one day. It's a, it's a bold, brief summary of what it is we believe as Christians. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an important statement to be made into the spiritual realm where we are constantly in the midst of spiritual battle from the enemy that is still, unfortunately, all around us. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption of Father in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. At this point, I'm going to do the special prayer of asking the Holy Spirit to come upon the bread and the wine. Now, there's different ways of understanding this throughout the church. Some churches, um, in the more Protestant traditions, this is completely a memorial. We're just remembering. It's, it, could, it could be anything. Wonder bread, salting crackers, doesn't matter. It's just a symbol. It could be grape juice. It could be 
so that it really could be anything because it's just a symbol of what Jesus did. That's one extreme. Then you have the Roman Catholic extreme where something literal happens at this particular prayer, that the actual elements themselves make it the body and blood of Christ. That's the other extreme. In our tradition, we, we acknowledge something called real presence. And in some way, the Holy Spirit comes down upon us, and this is changed from bread and wine to body and blood of Christ. How that happens, we don't know. We really don't know. Um, Queen Elizabeth um, the first had a saying. She said, what the Lord doth make it, I do in faith take it. Meaning we don't really understand, but we know it's no longer just bread and wine. But in some, in some way it now becomes for us the body and blood of Christ. But the thing I want you to remember is, as God's people, we are asking the Holy Spirit to come and transform these into his body and blood. And then you're going to take it into your own body. And you're going to go forth from here, filled with Christ anew. The Holy Spirit doesn't come upon us just once. He comes upon us again and again. And this is an important part of who we are as God's people, to receive this sacrament. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, Lord, to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. That amen that you just said is the only place in our prayer book that's in all caps and in bold. That is the great amen. Um, you, you, everything I've just said up here, I said and you said with me. And in your amen, you're acknowledging that that is your prayer as well. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say.
Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are the members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work and the goodness to do, to love and serve you as the faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This part of our blessing is, is from our, our early days in the history of this church when we were under a Kenyan bishop, not an American bishop. <clears throat> and this part, this blessing is, comes right out of the the liturgy of the Church of Kenya in East Africa. All of our problems, we send to Ross Christ. All of our difficulties, we send to Ross Christ. All of the devil's work, we send to Ross Christ. And all of our hopes, we send to Ross Christ. This final blessing is usually based on the season that we're in or a special holiday that we're celebrating, but it comes from the very first prayer blessing that was offered by the very first priest, which was Aaron. Moses' brother, and so I'll offer that one this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.